we're going to start a short little tour. As you can see, here is the exterior part of the building. And it's the exterior part of the building is built in Franciscan mission style that was built in the 17th century as friars first came to this area and also borderland style down near the border with Mexico. We're on this side of that border, which however was once Mexico. So we're gonna walk in the front door and we will simply walk through and I will give a brief explanation of the layout of this chapel in progress. Now we are standing at the front door of the chapel. And as you can see, it's a rounded arch with an arch above, basically where the traditional bell will go. And we're going to go through this arch into an enclosed portico, which is something similar to an assembly area before entering the church. So just follow me in. We're now standing in the middle of the entry rotunda. And here in the very center of this floor is a hole as you can look down here on the ground. In this very center of the rotunda area, there will be a rock, a big old rock from the desert. However, that rock will give water. So it's water from the rock, a very important symbol both in Judaism and in Christianity. Water flowing from the rock, the dryness of the earth, life flowing from dryness and dry bones. Baptism, in other words right here in this circle. And as you will notice, the circular area in the entryway, it's the form of a circle, but it moves high, even up to the vegas above in windows, which will be above us. So this entry area during the day will always be illuminated with natural light. The entryway itself is a chapel in its own right. It's a chapel of saints. Because in this entryway on each side of the rotunda, there will be five hand-carved wooden statues in their niches representing Franciscan saints, Francis and Claire, of course, but above all, saints who are known in the area of the borderland, that is, the southern United States and into Mexico and even into the whole Church of Latin America will be represented here. Miguel Pro, for example, a Jesuit saint martyred in El Paso the, uh, the, on the border. And then also Felipe de Jesus, who's the first canonized Mexican saint, an actual, a friar, who was actually martyred in Japan, but he's from Mexico City and from Mexico. So saints who represent different aspects of the culture and the life of the church in this area. Kateri Tecoita, of the Native American, um, Native American, she's represented here as well as Rose of Lima, Martin de Coors. So in this area, which we call the chapel, you enter, as you enter the church, you are entering into a circle of saints. And on the floor here, around the base of this area, there will be benches, a long bench around on both sides. And we hope that simply will also simply then be an invitation to prayer as we walk into this church, because when we enter the church, we are actually entering into the new life of baptism and into the communion of saints. Moving forward, there is another unique space. These pipes here will eventually be columns. And you can see, looking to the right and to the left, it's open space that goes outside on the side porticos. If you can get a glimpse here, in this area between the rotunda and the assembly area, there is another space that you pass through when you come and enter into this church. Now in this open space, between the entrance from the baptismal waters into the assembly area, this will be the area for the Sacrament of Reconciliation passing through that sacrament of reconciliation as we move to enter into the assembly of the church. It will be an open area. There will be panels on the walls that will open up and provide private spaces, two on each side. Those panels are not there yet, but this area here, when necessary, will be used for the area of the sacrament of reconciliation. And when not in use, the panels will be closed up against the wall. There are two reasons for this. One, 
not to take up space if it's not being used all the time. And the other point is to have the Sacrament of Reconciliation celebrated in privacy, but in a way that's open to the assembly because Sacrament of Reconciliation, although private, is a sacrament of the whole church and of the assembly. We will enter into the assembly area through these columns when the pipes are gone. And the assembly area opens us up into a very wide, expansive area. And if you look to the right and the left, those windows will be clear glass, really connecting one within the assembly area, but open to natural light and to the beauty of the natural environment here in southern New Mexico. Above all, the pecan orchards right there. This assembly area would just to seat um, basically 150 people comfortably, which would meet very well the needs of our retreat center. But if necessary, chairs can be added behind those columns, adding another 50, 50 places. So we're speaking almost 200 uh, people for, able to gather here in worship. And as you go forward here, there is another rotunda. So we have a rotunda in the entryway, and we have a rotunda structure, basically for the sanctuary or for the table, the altar table, as well as the ambo for the word, and then the presider's chair. And behind us, in the very back, well, right here, will be a 13-foot cross, roughly hewn and of a different wood, of a different texture than the rest of the wood in the, in the chapel. And the idea here was the cross, simple cross, not a crucifix, but the, a rough cross will be the central point of this whole worship area. And this cross will be in this rotunda, truly bathed in light, in three of these clear glass windows and of glass windows which are up high in the rotunda area just below the vegas. Here, there will be a wall right behind the cross, so the cross itself stands out but is bathed in light from above and from all around. And in front of the cross then will be the altar table, the presence chair over here, and the anvil for preaching. This sanctuary area will be a rotunda area, almost exactly, I believe exactly the same size as the rotunda area of the entrance where we have the communion of saints represented. So when one enters then into this chapel, coming forward from the first rotunda area with the saints in baptism through the reconciliation area into the assembly, what is the focus primarily simply a cross, which we believe is appropriate for this retreat center, Holy Cross Retreat, a devotion to the cross deeply rooted into the Franciscan tradition and spirituality. Now stepping back a bit, one will notice in this assembly area, on either side of the rotunda, on either side of the assembly area, there's a wall with two arched doors, both sides. Those are small side chapels. The only glass to be in this chapel that are stained, at least at this point in the planning, are the, ch are the windows in the two side chapels. There are six windows, six windows. And this side to the right will be the Eucharistic chapel. This first window will contain an image of Christ. An image of Christ in, in this window holding bread. Obviously a symbol of bread, the Eucharist. Extending his hand in invitation and pointing to the fishes that are going to be swimming in a stream through these glass windows. So it's loaves and fishes. And the only full image of a human figure is Christ inviting one in into this space. The tabernacle then will be simply against this wall, put into the wall, but extended out a little bit. This creates a private prayer space. 
and it preserves the Eucharist in the context of the chapel, but giving it its own space in a small side chapel. And then on the other side, let's look at the other side. Here now we're looking to the entranceway to another small side chapel connected to the assembly area. And the first window here will also have a human figure, Juan Diego. He will be standing in this window, opening up his tilga with the roses beginning to fall out. And also in a position that invites one in as the roses are unfolded from his tilga. Now some of these roses will be, will be caught by the wind and there will be images of the roses then that move through these other windows. And then in the center of this chapel on the wall, right here inside the chapel, there will be an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So this chapel is the image of Mary, dedicated to Mary, especially under the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So again, again we have another very significant prayer space. And as this is a retreat center, we need assembly area, we need the Eucharist, but we also need some private places for prayer that are connected to this space, but not within this space. Thus, when one comes into this chapel, the most impressive image one will see is the cross. And notice the bead is above. If you can take capture that from the pictures. The Vigas in the ceiling, traditional in borderland architecture, are raised a little bit, and where are they pointing? They're all pointing to the central rotunda where there is the cross and the table of the Eucharist, Eucharistic Lord. Thus, all eyes are simply immediately drawn to the cross. And then, Basically, once in the assembly, one can notice, but not be intrusively uh, uh, distracted, the subtle presence of the Lord in the Eucharist and Mary being honored in, uh, in her chapel in Guadalupe. And then as we leave this chapel, to go out through that rotunda of the saints or through the side doors, where these holes are will be columns and on each one of the columns there will be hand painted images of the stations of the cross so from being drawn into the cross as we come in as we leave to go out again through the communion of saints we're going out to the way of the cross that was done intentionally that as one leaves the church of holy cross one is struck by the images of christ on the way of cross, inviting us as we leave on our way to join him on the way of the cross.